we're going to the next uh, speaker, um, Ian Hodge. And uh, Ian is um, Environmental Agency's Chief Engineer, wow, um, and Director of Asset Management and Engineering. And um, Ian, Ian is, uh, for me, the symbol of the need of international cooperation across the North Sea uh, region. And he is an honorable member of the CRING of Coastal Engineers. Ian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Snappy title, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, where's Oscar? He is. I think I've got Oscar to thank for the title. It wasn't, wasn't mine. But uh, I think I was too slow replying to an email, Oscar, wasn't I? So you made it up. So, um, but the good news is my boss has seen this. Uh, <laughs> And, um, and the good thing is, my boss, who's Australian, is actually on an airplane travelling to Australia now. So she doesn't know what I'm doing here. Uh, she thinks I'm at work. <laughs> Which is brilliant, because, uh, you know, uh, I also paid for the ticket on Eurostar. So, uh, so you will see some slides in here that look like they're, they're something to do with work, but that's not why we're here, is it? But uh, anyway, snappy title. Uh, not the one I prefer. Um, and I did just take a hint because I think someone was just getting told off for running over time because I can see a clock here as well, so, so I've taken a hint. Um, you can probably tell because uh, I'm speaking in English. I think I'm the only Englishman here today, so keeping up with the conference has been good fun. Uh, thank you to Google Translate. I've just about managed to keep going, uh, and I'm, I might sort of call on it a, a little bit as we go through. Um, and I was just thinking in preparing these slides, um, you know, how to really uh, capture the career of such a charismatic guy in such a uh, short number of slides. So, my Dutch not being very good, I hope uh, my English is okay for you and that you can understand it. Uh, can you hear that? You can't hear it, can you? Dus ik hoop dat je dit kunt begrijpen of in ieder geval van de foto's kunt genieten. Maak je geen ja. zorgen. Ja. Ik heb maar 120. Ja. Ja. So, so thank you to uh, Google Translate. And curiously, you know, I was thinking about um, uh, doing a little bit of research on Ludolf before I came, and I turned to Google. Um, and of course, you go to Google and you type in Ludolf Wentholt, and, and what do you get? Je hoort hem altijd voordat je hem zeker ziet. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you try again because you know that's not quite as accurate as it should be. Uh, and of course you try again and you say, come on Google, please try a little bit harder. Yeah, let's try again. Good morning, polar two seas. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So anyway. Um, international Knowledge Exchange through Kring of Coastal Engineers. Oh, crikey, forget it. Uh, an alternative from Vermoyden to Wentholt in 350 years. Uh, this is the title I prefer. Um, and of course, two very serious people. Uh, you know, well, one of them's uh, maybe more serious than the other, perhaps. Uh, now, I put this slide up for a particular reason, because uh, two guys who've had huge influence in the UK uh, in terms of flood risk management. Uh, the guy on the left is probably a little bit more obvious because he's shaped some of the landscape of, of England over the years. Uh, the guy on the right you'll recognise, looking very austere, I must say, that's a brilliant photograph. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've, I don't know where I found it. I think that was a Google special as well. But, uh, yeah, something about these two incredibly serious people, just to bring them into contrast. So, uh, Vermoyden, of course, was an was extremely serious guy. lived a long time ago when everything was black and white and there was, there was no colour. Uh, so you've, you've only got a painting of him. Um, and this is a guy who shaped much of the landscape of England in the south of the country. So first commissioned by uh, Charles I to drain what's called the Isle of Axholm. And he also later drained the Norfolk Broads. So quite a lot of what you see in England is shaped by this guy. Uh, but he was an engineer of Dutch descent, came to live in England, and eventually became a British citizen and was knighted by the then king, Charles I. Uh, became Sir Cornelius Vermoyden. Uh, so come on, Ludolf, shape up. You're, you're lagging behind a little bit. You haven't been knighted yet. Um, and of course, really importantly then, I was sort of drawing to the contrast with, uh, with our friend who's also a very, very serious man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we all know him to be uh, incredibly serious. Um, but of course, a, another wonderful Dutch imagineer, I've called him, rather than Dutch engineer, because the imagination of Ludolf is um, boundless, as you all know. 
Um, and of course, um, Ludolf Wecht, along with the amazing Patrick Peters, of course, um, in the audience here, uh, brought to us the Interact 2 Seas programme, which has been working on really hard over the last few years. Um, and that's really had an impact in many places, and including in the UK. Um, and I've had the pleasure now of working with Ludolf since around about 2004. Uh, so I've become to know him quite well, and I understand how influential he can be. Um, an absolute tremendous uh, bringing together of people. That's what Ludolf's skill is. Uh, and he's, as I said, a very, very serious guy, as you can see here. Uh, <laughs> you know, takes every day really seriously, like it was uh, the last day, uh, as you can see again here. Uh, and somewhat of a bad influence, I would say, as well, because, uh, yes, that is me in, I think, 2016 or 17 in Gdansk. I think uh, Vout mentioned the Declaration of Gdansk, but uh, hold fire, you'll see a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so we move forward then. Of course, uh, to bring some other contrast between Vermoiden and Ludolf, of course, um, in the times of Vermoiden, we didn't have digital cameras, we just had artists. Uh, uh, Vermoiden, across the top here, lived in a time when floods were recorded artistically. So, uh, top flood here, 1607. Anybody recognise the picture? It's Newcastle. Uh, where I live in northeast of England, uh, 1707. Um, and then, of course, coming back to when Ludolf was born, when the world was in black and white also. Uh, these are the pictures from 1953. Uh, so, yeah, from uh, the 1600s to 1953, you know, bookending some brilliant Dutch influence in the United Kingdom. Um, and, of course, what um, brought about significant change in both of our countries was the floods of 1953. So this was some of the pictures of the impact in England. Uh, and, of course, terrible devastation here in the Netherlands as well. Uh, collectively, over 2,000 people, of course, were lost during these floods. But um, it triggered a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of collaboration between our two countries, which I'll come on to. Uh, now, I'm not going to play this video because I think it'll take too long, but uh, this is just a video that gives you some highlights from the 53 flood, but hold your thinking on it. Um, what I did want to do is just to say where in the UK flooding sits in terms of its risk profile. So, curiously, this was um, a government risk assessment um, in England coming from, I think it was 2019, uh, which is really important because uh, what you can actually see on here... Uh, is the, the risk of uh, coastal and fluvial flooding in England being absolutely uh, high risk. But there was only one risk that was considered potentially higher in 2019, and that was the potential for uh, pandemic. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the likely period of uh, occurrence in England at the time, between one in 20 and one in two years. So it was, wasn't bad forward planning, was it? Then, of course, coronavirus came. Um, and it wiped down coastal flooding, which used to be uh, the single largest risk in the UK. So now it's been topped only by the influenza. So flooding very much defines uh, both of our countries and how we operate. In England, we've got a huge amount of coastal risk, uh, same as you have here in the Netherlands. Um, some of that can be quite devastating. We have a terribly quickly eroding coastline. Uh, these are some of the damages from uh, storms in 2014. So you can see the scale of the intensity of the the sea battering the coastline on the south of England. Uh, and this was a railway line that collapsed on the coast of Devon uh, during 2014. Um, and I think two days prior to this photograph being taken, there were an extra 300 caravans on the top of this caravan site. Uh, and this coast is eroding at the rate of around 2 to 12 metres every year. So we, we do share some common interests. And that's why it's really important that we continue to work in partnership and why in the UK we richly value our colleagues here in the Netherlands in other countries across Europe. Uh, some, these are some of the uh, really strong relationships that we have, and I'll just touch on each of them. I've got a slide on each, but I won't talk for very long. Um, after the floods in 2015, we established a memorandum of understanding with Reichsvaterstadt, and this was mainly uh, to aid in cooperation between the agency um, and Reich's the staff around incident management. And you can see here some photographs of um, uh, Dutch colleagues visiting the UK during floods in 2015, 2019, um, and also a collaborative visit uh, by my colleagues across into the Netherlands, um, looking at how can we better and strategically look for solutions around calamity response and responding to flood incidents. So really helpful collaboration. We're also involved in ice storms. So ice storm is a network of large storm barriers. So the Thames barrier being uh, one of ours. The Maslin barrier you can see here, others around the country. 
So a relationship between uh, Dutch engineers, right at the start, the US Army Corps and the UK. Um, and again, very fruitful. Um, and then we also have a levy safety partnership with the uh, Rags Fart the Stat and US Army Corps. But what I really want to get on to is, is, is two things, the Anglo-Netherlands Society and the Kring. Um, now, the Anglo-Netherlands Society is really interesting because it's a collaboration that involves our two royal families. Uh, it's been going since around 1920, um, and it's about um, bringing together people with a shared interest in our two countries around uh, artistic, literacy, science and other interests, but importantly, involved, including flood and coastal risk management. So on its 100th anniversary in uh, 2020, I had the great uh, pleasure to uh, be in the company of your former queen, uh, Queen Beatrix, on the 100th anniversary. And we produced a book uh, which talks about the collaboration between the two countries. And in it, I was allowed to write a passage about collaboration in the Kring. Uh, so on the occasion of the, uh, the dinner, um, I got to speak to Queen Beatrice and, uh, you know, made some references to our colleagues in Mike's Fart to start with Kring, with uh, our friend uh, Mr. Wentholt, Ludolf, of course, with, uh, with Vout, and is Petra with us, Petra, Petra Houston, and Petra is the chair of the Kring. And she was really interested, so we had a really good conversation with uh, what's now Princess Beatrix about her interest and also the interest of the King, of course, King uh, Willem. And um, what she told me was that he's really interested in water management, and he was a student of water management, and was really interested in the Kring. Uh, and actually, she took away a copy of a book. So by royal appointment, uh, we do sort of have a record in the annals of the uh, Dutch royal family. Um, and this was that occasion. That is the book. Um, so you can see here, uh, Beatrix being presented with a, a hardback version of the book. Uh, but this lady here is uh, one of the English royal family. She's the uh, Duchess of Gloucester. Um, and this book here, North Sea Neighbours, uh, which is this one, uh, was a book that was uh, put together for this occasion and in which I had the pleasure of writing a passage. Uh, now, what I thought would be rather nice just to mark the occasion was that very book uh, that uh, the Duchess is holding here. And this is me. You can just see my shoulder and my left arm uh, <laughs> when I was describing it. But, uh, but, but the book is this book. This is that book. Uh, and I'd like to... Um, Leave that with you, Ludolf, but I'll, I'll give you it in just a moment, because uh, there's another object that comes along with it, but uh, just to be warned. Um, and that brings me to the Kring, uh, because the Kring uh, obviously formed after the floods in 1953. Uh, Dutch engineer uh, decided it would be good to collaborate and think about how do we evolve best practice in all regions across the North Sea and the Baltic. And together was formed an alliance of coastal engineers, scientists, and people with a shared interest in coastal risk management. Um, and the UK joined this network in around about 1996 and first hosted a meeting in Norwich, I think, or Eastbourne in 2000. Um, and I joined my first meeting of the Kring in 2004 in Egmont and Z, uh, when I first met Ludolf. Um, and I think, Val, if I'm right, that was the meeting where you took over as chair of the Kring, uh, your first one. And after a few years, yeah, and after a few years, I think, uh, Val passed on the chairmanship to Avery, uh, Adri Provost. And then, of course, uh, Adri uh, succeeded the role to Petra, who's the current uh, chair of the Kring. And um, Kring's been meeting uh, every year since. It has a long history, so these are just some of the locations where we've met. Uh, you can see the obvious gap uh, that we have towards the top. In 1920, there wasn't a Kring because of corona. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, had the pleasure of uh, being along every year in the company of Ludolf uh, and the colleagues uh, that you see around us. Looking forward to the meeting this year in Poland, uh, provided Poland still is Poland, of course, because we've got the Vistula Lagoon and just on the edge of the Russian state. So let's see what happens there. But um, some highlights then from the Kring, and this is what we're really here to talk about. Forget the boring work stuff. Um, so Gdansk in 2015, and you've heard Vout refer to the uh, declaration of Gdansk. Um, and Vout showed you a picture. Uh, so this is uh, Ludolf uh, declaring the treaty of collaboration between the different parties. Uh, in his usual weekend get-up, because he does like to get dressed up on the weekend. Uh, and, and here he is. I managed to find in the archives from a long time ago the short clip. So this is Ludolf uh, making the declaration of Gdansk. So if we could run the video. When I have tomorrow signed a lot of things, and that will be that I invite you to sign tomorrow to all participants 
Remember what I was saying about the contrast between Vermoyden and Ludolf? Ja, yeah. yeah, he's echt een serieuze man. Ja, 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 ja. Move on, move on another year, and we were in Lincoln, and um, and actually the the king was on the east coast, and I'm, I was hosting along with my colleagues, and um, it's it's a it's an important meeting in the history of king because we visited Lincoln Prison. Uh, and we actually had the formal dinner um, in Lincoln Prison. So this is us, uh, Ludolf, actually sitting in one of the cells enjoying his uh, dinner. So, sorry, Tia, uh, we did release him. And, and it would have been an ideal opportunity. But, uh, um, and the picture on the right is really important. And um, I'll tell you a little bit why in the next slide. But note uh, the headdress on these particular ladies here who are reenacting uh, the position in the, in the prison. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a moment. Um, because... If you could bring us then forward to 2022, Ludolf joined us in Telford in England for the uh, Flood and Coast Conference, and we, we visited uh, this site on the bottom right-hand side. So this is a place called Iron Bridge, um, and there's a really famous bridge. This is it. It was designed by Thomas Telford at the start of the Industrial Revolution. Um, and these are some of the temporary defences that the Environment Agency uh, installed. It's not working properly. Installs around um, Telford. Um, and right in the middle, you can see the, the building, which is a sort of cream colour. This is the White Hart Inn. It's a pub uh, in the middle of Telford. And, um, um, and I think it was in 2022 we first went there. So uh, as an excursion from the conference, we, we took Ludolf and some other colleagues for dinner. And we actually sat in, uh, inside the pub, uh, the window that you can see. We were just the other side of it, uh, describing the River Severn and uh, what a calamitous situation it is when it does flood. Um, and of course, uh, when we were sat eating dinner, Ludolf was remembering fondly the times that we were in Lincoln, in Lincoln Prison. Uh, and um, the headdress uh, was, you know, quite prominent in the conversation because uh, Ludolf had in front of him a white napkin. Um, and Ludolf thought it was uh, really quite amusing that we all reenact the, uh, the, the Lincoln Prison. <laughs> so, so for... For almost an hour, trying to eat uh, dinner in the, the White Hart Inn, of course, we, uh, we donned our napkins and uh, proceeded to uh, finish our dinner. Um, so we were asked to bring an object along by Oscar, and as well as the book, I did bring one other object, because we returned to Telford again a few weeks ago, didn't we, Ludolf? Um, and Ludolf again uh, decided that he was going to wear the, the Telford headdress. So I very kindly afterwards asked the staff in the uh, White Hart Hotel if I could uh, keep it as a, as a souvenir. And of course, they, they said yes very graciously. So it hasn't been stolen, Ludolf. You are safe. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I do have another gift. And uh, this is the napkin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'd like to give you the, I'd like to give you the boot. So if I can give you the book by royal appointment, <laughs> yeah. and if I can uh, give you the napkin, <laughs> I'd tell for the appointment. Thank you, Thank you Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't worry, I'm not going to use these slides. These are just so my boss thinks I'm at work, because the team put, to <laughs> because the team put together some slides. This is about, uh, you know, Dutch collaboration and sharing <laughs> ideas from uh, Hans Bosser. You know, we use similar... <laughs> Similar type techniques on the Lincolnshire coastline. This is the sand engine. You've seen it before. Uh, but this is, uh, this is Bacton and Norfolk, where we used a similar technique to the sand engine. Yeah, really interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Polar Two Seas, of course, Ludolf has been uh, incredibly involved in. I did just want to pause and say thank you to Ludolf and to Patrick. Uh, a brilliant uh, set of activities, and we've learned a huge amount, so it's been incredibly helpful for my organisation. So I did just want to pause on this slide and say thank you for that to you both and everybody, because that's been really enlightening. Um, and of course, I was just thinking now about the future, so 350 years after Vermoyden and a very serious man uh, sitting in front of us, we wish Ludolf well. So we wish you well in your retirement, Ludolf, on behalf of all of my colleagues in the UK. Uh, good luck and best wishes in everything that you do. Um, and of course, we were wondering about uh, how marvellous Oscar uh, will sort of pick up the reins. He's here. 
Um, and of course, we saw this video a little bit earlier, so it gives it away. But I was wondering, well, Ludolf has been so bold and has been so gregarious and so present. And in the moment, how's Oscar going to do? And then, of course, we found out. So if we just play the video. Dear Bullets to see friends, good afternoon from London. Oscar, what are we looking at? Uh, the Patagotitan. <laughs> and what's the sound of the Patagotitan? Bonsai! <laughs> Brilliant. So I think, Oscar, you're going to fit in just fine. Yeah, and good luck to your colleagues. Good luck, Jost. Um, one last Google treat. Uh, I was thinking, what would Google make of uh, the word bonsai? Uh, Buiten onze toekomstige generatie op de natuur gebaseerde oplossing met klimaatadaptief geïnspireerd onderhoud van heffingssystemen bonsai bonsai bonsai. Bonsai! Do you remind you of anybody? Do you remind you of anybody? <laughs> yeah. Good luck, and I'll leave you with just some reflections and some photos. But Ludolf, best wishes from everybody, your colleagues in the UK. Thank you.